Rascal and Beast. Fit, fabulous, and frisky. Um, to live here, you have to be employed by the church. You have to be invited. I can't oh, get in here. here. My favourite little fact, this is definitely the country with the lowest birth rate. Zero. Now, even though it's so small, it's absolutely independent with its own bank and currency and postal system and radio station and newspaper and healthcare centre and supermarket and departments. All of that in there. All of that in there. Its own army. Just as we head in, I want to introduce you to two quite important characters. On the left is a man looking old and grumpy. He is Michelangelo, because he was old and grumpy. <laughs> but the statue on the right, the man looking young and cute, is Raphael, because he was young and cute. Two of the rock stars of the Renaissance. We're going to see a little bit of their work today. As soon as we go through these doors, we wave goodbye to Italy, crossing the border. Please do not be disappointed. The entrance foyer looks just like an airport lounge. <laughs> Everything else is much nicer. Yeah, this is actually the Vatican. You wouldn't expect this, would you? The entrance. It's just the entrance. <laughs> yeah, isn't that it's crazy? Built in the 2000. Built in 2000, I know, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a separate country. Is there a separate airport check-in and we're crossing the border? I never really knew that this was like a separate country until we started researching it, you know? But this is, you know, just the new entrance built now is a little fascinating before we even get to the good stuff. During those Middle Ages, bronze doors melted down, bronze statues. Have you been to the Colosseum? Yes. 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 So you yes. saw all of the holes on the outside yeah. where the metal supports chiseled out they were melted down as well to make weapons there's one reason why they survived it already belonged to the church super important that pine cone it was the fountain in the outer courtyard of the first saint peter's basilica it's where people would wash before entering the church so because it belonged to the church it survived and it was moved precisely here in the year 1506. Well done, well done, guys. Because that is the year when the first St. Peter's was being pulled down and the new one was being built. It's called the sphere within the sphere to represent the world. Nice and shiny, but you see how broken it is. But then around comes the smaller globe to break out, hope for the future. And Mr. Tomato really likes his globes. There was an extremely similar one just outside the Twin Towers by the same guy that was very badly damaged. Its remains are in Battery Park. There's another one outside Trinity College Dublin in Ireland. So Mr. Tomato really does get around with his globes. But do the comparison. This one, and look at the one on top of St. Peter's Bazooka, way up high. Which one do you think is bigger? Seriously? The one up there. Uh, seriously, the one on top of St. Peter's <laughs> is twice as big as this. <laughs> Not at all. And just to give you an idea of how high up that is, it always makes me wonder how they got wow. it up there, and I have no idea, bad guys. Really? But it's also, that is really shocking. Uh, yeah. It can hold 16 people. If you look just to the right, you see the outline of the ladder going up to a three foot opening. It used to be a special privilege for the most important visitors. So Tsar Nicholas I of Russia has been in there. Queen Christina of Sweden has been in there. Nothing on this good earth will persuade me to go up that high because I don't like heights. But no one has been inside there since the 19th century because a rather large gentleman got stuck. You'll see the life of Moses on one wall, the life of Christ on the other. Everyone a masterpiece, and I'm not going to go through them because you know they're not Michelangelo, and we don't have nine months. But can I just say, please do not ignore the walls. The art critics say every one of them will be worthy of a visit in their own right. I just feel rather sorry for those boys because everyone walks in and goes, Oh, look at the ceiling, the walls are excellent. When they were done, nothing happened. 
elected for nearly 30 years. Pope Sixtus dies. His nephew is elected Pope. I want to give you a clue about the nephew. For his papal name, he chose the name Julius. He named himself after Julius Caesar. Popes do not normally name themselves after a military dictator, right? He was given a nickname, Julius the Terrible. And not many popes were nicknamed the Terrible. Very strong pope. But he does so much. First thing he does, he pulls down the first St. Peter's Basilica. He was the pope who opened this place as a museum in the year... 1506. There you go, Paul. Well done. Um, he was the Pope who invited Raphael here, and he asked Michelangelo to decorate the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. That was a huge deal. What did you say? He the Pope threatened, him? threatened him to excommunicate Michelangelo from the Catholic Church. What that meant was he was basically saying, either you paint the ceiling or you are going to hell. You know, that, it was that serious. <laughs> so he shows up in a really bad mood. I do not think he would have wanted to meet Michelangelo. He argued with everyone, he never washed, and at one point he famously did not remove his boots for five years. I don't need to tell you this, Michelangelo never married. Who was going to take that on? So he shows up. And I love what the Pope asked him for. He wasn't expecting a lot. He said, for the ceiling, I would like a white background and a plain geometric pattern. That is what the Pope asked for. And this is what the Pope got. is famous for the anatomy, the musculature, the movement. What we've got up above, heaven, Christ in judgment, please, Look at the face and hair of Christ, because we're going to see the model for that in a few minutes. Look at the position of the body. We're going to see the model for that in a few minutes. They're still in this museum. And the Virgin Mary always wears blue. St. Peter holds two keys, the keys given to him by Jesus. It, even today, the symbol of the Vatican, the crossed keys of St. Peter with the crown. Um, but who are these? These saints and martyrs, we only know who they are because of how they were tortured. So we know that this must be St. Lawrence because he was grilled alive right here in Rome, one of the earliest martyrs. And so he's holding his grill. Anyone like to guess what St. Lawrence is the patron saint of? He was grilled alive. Fire. Chefs. Chefs. Yeah. <laughs> it's not very nice really, is it? Worse, St. Bartholomew was flayed alive. He had his skin removed. There's the skin. Yeah. And the face on the skin is a self-portrait by Michelangelo. Not the best looking guy in the world. The lady in green, looking like she's on steroids because he only used male models. She's St. Catherine. She was tortured on the wheel. That's where we get our firework, the Catherine wheel. St. Sebastian is holding arrows. He was shot through with arrows. You're getting the idea these aren't nice. They're really disturbing. But it is another of Michelangelo's very simple messages. Look how they suffered for their faith. And they're all in heaven. And how are you going to be judged? Because it's the end of the world. The trumpets are sounding. The good people regain their bodies. And they're helped up to heaven. But look at the damned. Look how they're fighting, struggling, praying on the way down to hell. And look in hell. Look at those monsters. Personally, I think it was the inspiration for Lord of the Rings. Um, Angelo was really proud of this. Pope Paul III loved it. Michelangelo was 65. He thought it would be his last great work. But then one man decided to criticise it. Now, that was a mistake. He was called Biagio di Cesare. He was a member of the Pope's court. He said, don't like it. Too many naked bodies. Michelangelo was furious. He said, if you don't like it, I think I will put you in it. And he puts him in hell here. <laughs> but there's the face of the man who criticised him. He's got donkey's ears. He's wrapped around by, look where the snake is biting him. <laughs> De Chersonet was not particularly pleased. He went straight to the Pope and said, look what Michelangelo has done. Make him change it. 
the Pope loved it. He just said, I'm sorry, if he'd put you in heaven, I could have done something about it. But he put you in hell. I'm not going down there. So that is what happens if you criticise me. Just to consider, he started with no experience. And it turns out to be one of the greatest masterpieces in the world. I'd also quite like you to think that Michelangelo painted the Sistine Chapel. He sculpted the Pietà, which for me is one of the best statues in the world. It's in St. Peter's. And he was architect of the Dome. Three masterpieces in three different disciplines. These Renaissance men drive me nuts. What makes me wonder what I've done with my life? But you get your must have not wanted to meet him, but he certainly achieved a lot. And he lived to be almost 89, and that was amazing for the time. Do you know the story of the Trojan Horse? <laughs> yeah? Do we? Yeah? Okay, then imagine. The massive wooden horse, full of the Greek soldiers, is outside the gates of Troy under siege. Lyacon, this man, was a priest in Troy, who said, Do not let that horse to our city. And then listen to him. This is the man who said, Beware of Greeks bearing gifts, which is a very nice, but I can still say it. But to say nothing is historic importance. And this was rediscovered in the year 1506. I told you a lot was going to happen. But its real significance here. That was in your, the, the parks and gardens of your villa, and your next door neighbour had one white marble, you were saying, I've got a Ferrari in my garage, you've got a Ford, because I had to import that material all the way from Greece, you know, which is the Kardashians in the ancient world. <laughs> but the star of both of these rooms, look at the mosaic floor in the centre, it's from the 2nd century AD. If you think you are any good at jigsaw puzzles, imagine doing that. And that and its twin in the room opposite come from the Emperor Hadrian's villa in Tivoli. Brasco and Beast. Thin, fabulous and frisky.